Okay, this is a brief tutorial on present value, future value functions to be read in conjunction with uh, chapter 6 in the book. And um, if you follow it closely, you will be able to use Excel effectively and understand how it calculates present and future value, even bond values. I'm sorry, it's chapter 5 in the book. So let's take a look at uh, somebody who puts $800 in the bank and earns 6% for the next five years. How do we determine how uh, much will be there in five years? Go to your financials, financial functions, go to future value. The rate is 6%. The number of periods in this case would be 5 the present value, what you would be putting away is 800. Click on this box, the OK. It will be worth 1,070 in five years. Now up here is where the function is up in this dialog box. So let's say you're gonna put it in for six years. Just change that to six. And it'd be worth 1,134. Uh, let's say you were gonna only earn, and by setting it up this way, you could play around. Let's say you can earn 10% in the bank. Well, notice how the money goes up to 1,417. So that's the time value of money. I mean, if you say if you earn more money in the bank and you leave it there, the money compounds. It's worth more at the end of the term. What about an amount in the future? What is it? What do you need to put away? Let's assume that you need to have money for a down payment for a house or a wedding. What would you have to put away today? That's a present value function. So you go to present value, which would be PV present value. Very easy to use this, but you have to put the percentage sign. Very important you put the percentage sign next to the percentage or this will totally uh, be incorrect. So let's say we're going to earn 10%. We know we can earn 10% in an annuity. And in 10 years, we need to have a future value for a down payment on a house of, we're going to take out $50,000. Put that right up there in FV. No payments. We're not going to make any payments in the interim. So what would he need, we need to save today? $19,277. You would need to put $19,277 in the bank if you're going to earn 10% for the next 10 years and want to come out with $50,000. What happens if, for argument's sake, you know you can only earn 5%? Well, what happens? Obviously, you'd have to put more money away, 30695 So what we're really saying is if we have a future sum, say, on a lottery ticket or how much money we have to put away, well, we can find that or a contract that pays us in five years. By using different discount rates, we can figure out what, we, what that money is worth today. The higher the rate, the lower it's going to be worth today because we could be earning money at a higher rate all along. The lower the rate, the more money it will be worth today or the more money we'd have to put away today. It's just a function of mathematics. Go back again to 10%, and notice that the price goes down to 19,277, because we're either earning 10% for five years, or if we're looking at it today, we're discounting it by 10%. Now, in terms of bond prices, essentially, that's how bond prices are fixed. If we have a bond that pays 5% over five years, you would lay out $1,000, earn $450 coupons, and in the fifth year earn a thousand fifty. But since the coupons do not change, the bond price has to change. Since the coupons do not change, the bond price has to change if I want to sell those bonds in the open market at a different rate. Now if the bond if, if interest rates stayed at five percent, the bond price would never change from a thousand. People would lend a thousand, earn the fifty dollars over five years, and the thousand fifty back. But what happens when rates go up? Let's assume rates go up to uh, seven percent. What would that bond price be today to adjust for the additional interest rate? Go to financial. Now you're going to use your net present value function, NPV. And now we use 7% in the rate function. 7%. What are the values? You would just pan down through the cash flows. Hit OK. That bond would be worth $918 today. Why? Because it only pays 5%. It 
people do not want to be stuck with a 5% coupon, as I said in previous videos. So since I don't want to be stuck with a 5% coupon, essentially, to make that work at 7% interest rates, the buyers will only pay, the buyers will only pay uh, $918 for the bond. Now, when the Fed lowers interest rates, the bond would be worth more to, to uh, compensate the seller for the higher coupon. So let's say Fed rose, lowers interest rates to 3%. I'm changing it up here. Notice the bond is now worth more. People will pay 1091 to make up the difference between 3% current interest rates and the 5% that the bond pays. So you start to see how bond prices are a function of net present value or interest rates on a present value basis. Again, go back to the text and look at it. But that is how bond prices are purely a function of present value. If I go to 5% where the bond was issued, notice that the bond price is $1,000, the same as what we paid. So you get an idea of how bonds are priced. Very simple to understand. But you need to set this up on your computer, and I know good students constantly run different scenarios to get a better idea of how it works. Finally, we look at an annuity and the rate of return on annuity. What would be the future value of a payout of $700 over a period of time if I'm earning 8%? Well, let's say I can manage to put away $700 over a period of time. How would I calculate that? Go to financials. Go to future value again. In this case, the rate is 8%. The number of periods is five years. The payment would be 700. I wouldn't put any money away in the beginning. What's it worth to me? $4,106. I have these as positive, so this will show up as a negative. But the bottom line is, if I put $700 away, let's say I make that a negative. Notice how the number changes. Just so if I put $700 away in an account for five each year for five years, earning 8%, I'm going to come out with, that's an annuity. That's if I continually save money in a 401k. Let's say I can only earn 6%. I'm running different scenarios. Pension funds do this. Then it would be $3,945. let us say I can earn 10%. Notice when I set up this way, I can look at different scenarios. Obviously, the future value is worth more. So that's the idea behind an annuity. Going back to bond values, you can see why when the Fed lowers rates, bond prices go up, and when the Fed raises rates, bond prices go down. So if the Fed starts raising rates, people will see a hit in their bond prices. Obviously, if you hold it to the end, you get your money back, but you wouldn't want to own a 5% bond when everyone else is earning 7 or 8%. So either way, you're either losing money on paper or you're losing money in actuality, virtually. All right, last thing I want to show you is how to take something that's annual and convert it to quarterly or other or monthly or whatever. In this case, we look at uh, an account where we put $100 away for 5% for three years. So I look at the future value. Future value is a rate of 5%. Number of periods is three years. I put the three in. I'm sorry about that. The payment or the pay, no payments, I'm not making payments, but my present value is $100. What does it come out to? $115. So if I put $100 in the bank for three years, it would be 5%. Let's assume I'm getting compounded quarterly, which means every quarter I'm getting interest on my interest. How do I solve for that? Okay, so every quarter the bank is willing to pay me. I go back to financial, go to future value, in this case, the rate is 5%, but what I do is I divide by four. I divide my rate by four, and I multiply my periods. Now, instead of three years, I multiply the three years by four. So it's 12 periods, but I have to divide the rate by four, otherwise I'd be overstating the amount. There's no payment. The present value is 100. Notice it's slightly higher when it's quarterly compound slightly higher slightly higher what happens if it was monthly go to recently used in this case because you'll have the same it'll save the ones you just used go to future value 
The rate in this case is 5%, but now I'll divide by 12. The number of periods is 3, but I'll multiply by 12. That's how I adjust. No payment, but my present value is 100. Even slightly higher on a monthly basis. So those are the basics that I think you need to know for this chapter. Obviously, you need to read the whole chapter to get the full view, but you get an idea of how to use Excel in conjunction with the book and to get the most out of different and, and look at different scenarios. Thank you.